welcome back to my channel. This is Didsbury Art Studio and I am Sally. And in today's video, what I want to do is go through kind of a series of using different weaving techniques. And I want to base killer weave on seasonal changes. In particular, it's going to be looking at winter and it just being inspired by the textures and the creams and the whites and the blues and the purples, those kind of colours in my weave. Now what I've done is I've already organised the wools and some macrame. I've got some felt and I've also cut up some bits of fabrics into little strips which I'm going to use as well. And yeah, I will show you how I put together this weaving board as well. So shall we get into it? So I'm going to begin by using some of this string, which I've got tons of. I'm just going to do quite a long length because I don't know how much I need. And what I'm interested in, I keep looking over here because that's where my image is, but I'll put it on the screen so you can see, but I'm quite interested in doing quite a subtle line where the clouds are but I also want some of this warp left so I'm going to just wrap this around on that length and I think what I'll do is just then I'm going to Take the string over the next warp length and, and I'm going to do the same again. I want it kind of sloping down. I'm not entirely sure whether you can see this properly, so I'm going to just. Get... So I'm just going under. Like that, and then kind of sloping it down. So notice that I've been putting the string over the top and wrapping it under. This time I kind of want to go back so I'm going to change the direction and tuck. So I've gone over this warp length and under again and then I'm going to go over and under and you can see that it's just starting to change direction. So I'm getting a, a shape over here beginning to form. I don't want to go too low, so it's around about there. And then I'm going to go back. So I'm going to change the direction again. So this time I'm going over the length. And you can just push it up with your fingers or you can use a weaving needle, which I haven't used yet. I've just been using my hands and that's just about where I want it all to be. 
There's a video that I've done quite some time ago actually. It was a black and white weave. I'll link it down below in the comments and you can see some of the techniques that I'm going to be incorporating in this one. I'm actually feeling like I want to make this much thicker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double it up and head back the other way. So I'm going to take my can you see that? Yeah, I'm going to take my string over this warp length and tuck it up and then over the top of that one, tuck it up and the next one. And carry on. Okay, cat cam just left her in here and she's got that tail wagging and she's going crazy. So I'm going to use this wool, I'm like an oat kind of colour um, and obviously the texture is a little bit different to the string but I want to start introducing a couple more sort of strands coming up here. So I've kind of gone one direction and I'm going to go back with a different wool. This one's slightly thicker and I quite like the texture of it and I think it's going to look good just underneath that so we'll give this a whirl. Now I'm just going to head back the opposite way. Just let the wool just overhang like that and then I might take it back in later but I'm going to add a couple more different colours just following the shapes of some of the clouds in there as well so I'm just going to add some more because I want some very enclosed areas in there as well sort of jumping back and forth now I'm going to do a bit of a plain weave with this slightly thicker fluffy white wool and I've doubled it up so it's a little bit thicker. With the plain weave, it's really very simple. Obviously, as I said, this is the warp, the weft is going horizontally. So what you need to do, I've started on and under on the first row. So then I'm gonna go over the top and under the next warp. And then I am going to go back this direction just because I've got a small gap to weave. And I'm just going to keep pushing the weave up so it's nice and tight. And then I'm going to go over, under, over, and then under, over, under, over, under. And you can see what I'm starting to do. Here I am just doing a plain weave in this little section here. She's in the string. My warp sort of gaps are half an inch wide, but you can make them smaller if you want to and that'll just give you a tighter. Next, I'm gonna be quite intentional with some greys pale grey. So again, I'm going to do some plain weave over here. And plain weave over here with a little bit of a darker, thicker grey and it's making quite an impact. So now I kind of want to tone it down a little bit so I would just undo the wool that I've got there and I'm going to just introduce a different grey, slightly lighter, thinner grey. And you can see I'm flitting in between using a weaving needle and not. So it's just completely up to you what you prefer. So now I'm going to carry on with the 
plain weave over here. Now I'm going to go into using some strips of netting. You can actually thread these through with a squeeze but through the eyeing needle or you can sort of hold the fabric completely up to you. And I'm going to start, uh, so literally I'm just doing the same routine over and under for the plain weave. And obviously because this is thicker and chunkier, it's going to go quick and fill the area up a little bit more. But I'm using the, it's like a netting fabric, just because I still want it to be quite quite light, really. And I, uh... Next, what I want to start doing is using some strips of fabrics to weave through. I'm just trying to hook it to the next colour like that so it looks like it's sort of joined. push those up. What I'm doing now is I've just switched back to this colour so I'm alternating and making a bit of a stripey effect. So I'm just going to pull that through. I'm just trying to pick up on a couple of the techniques that I can see crossing threads have used. Obviously it's my own slant, it's the way that I do it, it's not a copy. It is my interpretation of this secondary source picture of the internet. And then you can just tuck these threads behind. Next I'm going to go in with the mountains and I'm going to use this really big felt. And I'm going to leave it quite loose. I'm not pulling it too tight. I'm just going to do a little bit of these mountains here. Look how chunky that is. Love that. there is I've twisted some of the grey fabric with the netting and I'm just kind of following on from the mountain sort of perspective that I'm trying to get. Yeah I'm just mixing it up a little bit so I might drop that and then go back to the felt. Just pinching it a little bit as well so it just stands out. And then I'm going to head back a little bit this way. So I'm taking the lens back the opposite way and it's becoming really, really chunky now. So I kind of want it to be chunky there and sort of decreasing in height, I guess. So I'll be pulling it tighter now as I get further into the center. So this is looking a bit of a mess. Work in progress. And then we've got a sleeping cat in the hamper. So the artists that I've currently been looking at for this project 
as an artist reference, I'll include some clips in here. They're called crossing threads and I've looked at a couple of their different types of weave stitches they've included. So what you do is you put your wool under two warp lengths. Oh, here's a pussycat. And what do you think you're doing, hey? What do you think you're doing? Uh, so what we do is I've gone under two and I've gone across and under again. Oh my gosh, she's back again. Right, we're back on it. <laughs> so we're going to go over the top and then we're going to pick up two warp lengths, wrap it around the back and take it over the top, wrap it around the back, take it over the top, wrap it around the back, take it over the top. Wrap it around the back and then if I wanted to change direction I'm going to go over the top and back, over the top and back and it's kind of making this braided effect. Just a slightly bigger version than the one I've already done. So looking at the picture there, I'm going to sort of think about getting some angles in of the mountains there. So I'm going to bring those down towards the bottom of the piece. They told me that I always had to be good. But being good always be problems is true. So I learn it, I learn it, and now I know I don't want to play it. All right, we seem to have got another problem. Seems to like this belt, which keeps sitting on the top of my piece. So, like that. I think she thinks it's a game. It's a game, is it? Okay, so this time I'm going to just wrap and do my kind of version of the sumac weave, which is quite tricky just next to this bit. Let's see how long she's going to last before she wants to play with this string here. One every warp strand, so rather than the two. Do you know what I mean, Layla? Do you understand? Oh. So what I'm up to next is I'm looking at some of the trees down here. Now I don't want it to be realistic. I kind of want it to have an impression of the trees using some of these strips of fabrics here. Maybe a little bit of this green wool. Maybe a little bit of the grey denim. I think this will be added later. Probably going to be using plain weave and maybe some stripes. Actually what I've decided to do, and then I'll probably do some splits in there, so I'll show you how to do that. This one I did plain weave and then kind of split it 
So I've still got some of the warp length showing. Just to tone down that dark green I put at the bottom, I feel like it's too heavy. Add a little bit of a lighter fabric. Seemingly is working, but I feel like the fabric was a bit heavy. What I like about the sumac weave is that you can just outline little areas. So I've got this little space down here, which I've intentionally left undone but I just want to outline the shape. Next up what I've decided to do is put like a tassel -y sort of bit on the bottom because I just feel like it sort of goes really blunt here at the end and that's not what I want at all. So I'm going to add some textures and what I'm doing is I've got the slithers of fabric here and I'm just tying them to the warp length so doing a little loop threading my needle through like so and then decide on what length I want it and then just tie a little tie there just to hold it on it's got these kind of loopy effects and I can cut those and rip them I'm just gonna have little different lengths of them so far I have been doing some little tassels, I've cut up some more of this net curtain and I'm just going to start layering up some of the colours. I'm taking some of the colours down into this tassel bit at the bottom. Just going to do a sumac up here. I'm thinking that I just need to tie in this area up at this top left a little bit more with some creams. So I've got this quite thick felt which I've just divided up, trimmed it off a little bit. So you can see the sumac goes behind to get to the point where everything's like really chaotic mess I really need to tidy up now because I just can't see what I'm doing with this weave so I'm going to organize the walls and the fabrics and just get a bit of a cleared space so I know what I'm doing next Okay, tiny bit better. At least I've got my walls over here, I've got my strings and ropes and fleece over at the back and then I've got some strips of fabrics down there and I've been retaining all my little scraps. So ideally now, this is where the weave's up to, I want to start doing some more textural 3D bits to it. So I'm going to move it over here and get going. Just showing you where I'm up to over here. I've just literally been sort of adding some textural pieces, making it a little bit more 3D with some strips of fabrics and wraps and things. So when I say wraps, I do some long lengths of wools and fabrics, and then I'm gonna start wrapping them. I'm at the point where I'm very nearly finished. Um, this is not a commissioned piece or anything like that. It's just for pure um, enjoyment. It's for um, obviously an art resource as well to use as a demonstration piece in terms of a YouTube video, but also to use in the classroom as well for pupils. So I've incorporated quite a few different techniques in here. The latest one is this little tassel here and I'm just going to quickly show you how to do one and then I think I'm going to call it a day. There is, so, I'm looking at this and there's like so much more I could do, I could do some more of these wraps and tassels over here 
but I'm going to have to stop there because the YouTube videos become quite long. So let me show you how to do the tassel. What I'm doing here is I'm just doing several long lengths. I've got some beautiful, I've been given some beautiful mohair wool here, which I really want to use because I think it will link in well with some of the peaches colours that I've done. So yeah, just chop all those loops up like so. So I'm just going to pop that halfway along. Tie a knot. Yeah, there we go. And then I'm just doing a bit of a wrap like so. So there's the tassel. It to go. Don't want it symmetrical. So probably down there is just finding a gap that's going to hold, and then I would just tie a knot to hold it on. Just decide on the length. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. When I say today, as you can see, I spread it out over several days. So yeah, there's a lot of work gone into this. Uh, it's taken quite a few hours by now. Um, so yeah, if you have enjoyed this today, really important, please hit the, the well, you can hit the subscribe button as well. That would be fabulous. Um, if you want to follow me and have free content every week, but do hit the like button. It's really good for me to see when you've enjoyed a video and whether to make more like that. As it happens, I think I may well make a few more weaves like this one, just because I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Yeah, so do hit the like button. It's really important to show me that you've enjoyed it. So I shall see you next week. Take care of yourselves. Leave me a nice comment and I'll see you soon. Bye. They told me that I always had to be good.